Hey you, yeah you, would you like to take better low light pictures? Well, if so, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm gonna send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and what I'm about to show you is an actual raw look of a recording of a 15 minute rapid fire critique that one of my mentor students picked up and I thought it was really good and I asked them if I could share it with you guys because there's a lot of good information in there and that's what you're gonna see right now. So this is a Zoom recording of me doing this rapid fire critique. Normally they're 15 minutes, but I went into overtime because sometimes they just deserve some extra information and that's what happened this time around. So here we go, let's watch this rapid fire critique McCritikerson. All right, so I just read over your email. I see exactly what you need. Um, this is gonna be mostly a gear thing. I, I know that. Um, oh, you have the 100 to 400. I just started testing that thing out. And yeah, I just started testing that out. Will be what I'll say about that. Cause actually, let me, let me jump in real quick and show you this. Cause nobody's seen these yet. It's, it's tough. This lens is not, not ideal for sharpness. And I'm using an R5. Okay, so I'm using an R5 with that lens and it like that one is pretty good. Like that one hit, but there's a lot of times these these are gonna take a second to load where look the F8, the seven one, look, when you're shooting surfing, it's not really gonna matter what the blur of the background's gonna be, but the focus is gonna be the hardest thing. Like I don't think this is gonna be super duper sharp, right? That's not super duper sharp. It's good enough, but it's not great. And I'm using an R5, right? A, a subject standing still is going to be fine, but a lot of the action stuff is very difficult with this lens because it's it's just not super duper 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 um, quick or sharp. So we've got one one thousandth of a second F8 ISO 400. So that's fine. But to freeze that action, especially surfer, like you can go faster and you don't have to worry about the ISO too much. The R can handle it. The R can handle a lot. That was a really good sensor in there. Just really bad autofocus. It's not the autofocus that you want. And it's going to be very difficult to get solid autofocus with the R. The R was like a placeholder camera that got Canon into the mirrorless world. It's it's good. Like you could do portraits and it would be great for stuff like that. But when it comes to action and shooting fast, it's only like three frames a second. It's a slow moving camera. So take that into consideration. And the 100 to 400 is not the greatest lens. It's inexpensive and it's going to get the job done but it's not going to do it extremely, extremely well. I mean, this person up here has got a, a bazooka. This lady. Uh, all right. So 300 millimeters. Like this is fine. You could just pump it up a little bit, but you're going to see such a major difference with different lenses. This Canon has the 100 to 500 is going to be a good option. Sony has a 200 to 600, which is probably the best option. That's a native lens on the Sony side. We could talk more about that as I as I go through these images. Um, compositionally, I think that they're too much in the middle. Sorry, the center of the frame right here. My composition that I would want to do would be less uh, snow, less sand down here. Do you see how we put them now below this line? So they're not right in the middle because before they were right in the middle of the entire frame and the, it just throws the composition off. But here, when you have them down on this level at the bottom, it just makes it feel slightly better. Just it feels more balanced than just this, right? This seems like it's off and it doesn't have any reasoning for this composition. If you just tilt it up just a little bit and did the same composition, then I think it would have been better. But so I was just showing you on that on that crop what we could do. All right, so uh, F10, you shouldn't be at F10, right? You should be at the most at F8. Then you're at only 174. See how everything's in focus from front to back? That's what's going to happen when you're in F, when you're at F10. So I would just lock it in at five, six, and then as you zoom out, it's gonna automatically go to eight. And as you come back in, it should go back to 5.6 when you're zooming. Um, you can go with a faster shutter speed and that will, you can get faster because you don't need to be at F10. So you can go faster. Uh, let's see what Skittles does here. Skittles is gonna pump it up a lot. Maybe a little too much, but you get, you get the point. Maybe warm it up just a little bit. 
So it's a good shot, but you could see why these, these people become a distraction at F10. And why are you gonna see noise and grain like this? You're gonna see noise and grain as you crop into the image. Because if you shot this at 174 millimeters and there's no way they're that close to the ground, uh, the land, so that is probably why you cropped. The less you crop, the less noise you're gonna see. The more you zoom in on something like this, the more the imperfections are going to show up. So it's just a matter of filling the frame as much as possible to give you a better shot. But it's a good shot. Because there's only so much you can do. What the hell is this? Uh, I would almost call this an accidental shot. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> not to be blunt, or well, yeah, to be blunt. I was uh, that was what the hell is this? Is more so. I don't know what you were going for with this one. There's mist or something on the there's something on the lens, or it's just huge lens flare. So that's not exactly something I would go for. That's much better. Um, one thing I would suggest for this with your 50, because you talked about it, the 50 is a very good lens. Uh, if you put this on a tripod, like for the landscapes, you don't need to be at 1.8. Yes, you have the 1.8, but when it's a landscape, you don't need to shoot at 1.8. It's hot in here. So this is one where you could be at F4 and it'd be perfectly fine because 1.8 is more for the shallow depth of field. The colors are fine, but what I would say is get a tripod set up, go for a super slow shutter speed, like one eighth of a second or a quarter of a second and get the cars moving and you'll get some light streaks or just compose it different so that you don't see any of the cars and it just becomes more about the trees and less about anything else, right? You know, something a little different because I think the cars become a distraction. Let me jump in here real quick and say, are you tired of posting images and just getting people giving you the thumbs up or that's fire emoji, but no actual real feedback about your work. Well, that's why I started phronosphoto.com slash mentorship because I'm offering two different types of mentorships by me that you can sign up for. One is a 15 minute rapid fire critique that's just like the one you are seeing right here. And the other is a one-on-one -on -one 45 minute Zoom call where I will look at your work, give you live feedback right there, and you can ask me whatever you would like to ask. So if you'd like to sign up, head on over to phronosphoto.com slash mentorship now let's get back to the rest of this critique the color everything looks really nice on this but why are we at f9 that's the question why are we at f9 on something like this this at f9 doesn't doesn't work why doesn't it work because well i mean it works everything's in focus but that's the thing is why does everything need to be super in focus here plus i mean you're already at a, only at 100 iso you could just up your shutter speed you could be you could be at two eight. You could be at four. But really, F nine. There's very few opportunities or very few times where I would be shooting at F nine. Almost none, right? Maybe some landscapes you could do it. Now I like what you got here, but maybe take a step back, get their hands in there, see where they're sitting, because I like the way that we have the color of the background. The colors look good. Your processing looks good here, but the F nine is just just from a thinking standpoint. There's probably very few situations where you need to be at F9. Now you may be in F9 because you may have switched from your 100 to 400 and it may still be in F9. So keep that in mind when you're editing that that may not be what you're looking for, or not when you're editing, when you're shooting, that you don't need to be at F9 for this. Um, so I would have just also backed up just a little bit. Okay, so from a portrait standpoint, now we're at F2, much better. Look at the background. Uh, it's part of a photo story. If he's the surfer, we could start to tell some of that. but. Remember what I said earlier, where I wanted the subject more at the bottom of the frame because you had them right in the center. Do you see how you have the eyes right in the center here as well? That is another thing that I like. Watch this. I like to bring the eyes above. Let me make sure we're in aspect ratio two, three. I like the eyes to be above the center. And something like that is going to feel more, just feels better. Our eyes aren't in the middle of our face. That's where our nose is. So to me, it feels awkward when I see an image with the subject's eyes right in the middle of the frame. In this case, we brought it down a little. We don't need to see all the hair. We can see it, but the eyes become the most important. So this is great, right? Now with this composition, it's a million times better. Um, you're at one eight thousandth of a second at 100 ISO because it's bright sunlight. There's only so much you could do at F2 um, and you did it really well. So that's a, that's a really good one. 
your processing looks pretty good as well on this. Um, Times I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, let me see where the shadows are. I'm gonna say it's uh, 1.38 p.m. 2.46 a.m. Nope, not 2.46 a.m. Your camera was set wrong in terms of your time. Oh, well. Based on the shadow being here, it's 1.48. Um, anyway, so I like the feel of this. This is really good. Now think about it. Your kid's a surfer. Let's think about what kind of story can we tell about the surfer, your son. We've got getting up in the morning to go surfing, right? Maybe you get a wide angle shot of him getting out of bed or sitting there on the corner of the bed, just like with his hair all a mess, getting ready to go surfing. You've got getting to the car. So you're going to drive somewhere. All right. So you get to the beach. What are you going to do? He's going to start walking down with his surfboard with the early morning sun coming up possibly. So you have a chance for a silhouette of him walking to the to the water from the car. So you get some nice horizontal options for that where he's off to the left-hand side. You could get a shot like that. That would be good with a silhouette um, because the, 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 the tether or whatever the hell they call it, the leash will be probably floating behind. So you got those ideas. So we're trying to tell that photo story. You've got the portrait. This is a great portrait. You've got the action of when he's in the water. Um, you've got the, the 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 putting the surf wax on on the board. So there's so many things to think about. You've got interacting with other surfers. You've got coming out of the water. So you've got the victory. You also may have dejection if he doesn't do as well. So you have all those different things to think about in your mind. Wides, mediums, tights, details. Break all those things down. Tell those photo stories so that it helps build the best picture. Like, this is great. Now let's see the rest that go with it. 300 millimeters. I mean, that's F8 because that's that lens. Uh, yeah, there, there's not much I could say here. This time, I'd rather see some of the, the sand or some of where these people are walking, and we're not just chopping them right here. Um, I don't mind the compression of the, the different layers here. We've got this is in focus, but then we've got back here, some of the haziness that's going on. Uh, you can cut through haze with dehaze. See dehaze, you can make it more hazy, you can make it less hazy, but see how it's just banging through that. Dehaze is gonna be your friend when it comes to this stuff, but you wanna be careful because portraits with dehaze, see how it just can overdo it. I just don't wanna edit this just a little bit just tweak it a little bit so you got the color you could also go black and white that's a little a little on the hot side but you have different options that you could do with that yeah so for this stuff for the landscape type things it's i think wider would probably be a little better because it just seems like you're just pointing over here and taking a picture pointing over there taking a picture so keep in mind that it's not just about pointing it over there and taking a picture, you want to make sure that there's some interest to it. And this just seems like it's just it's just a snapshot of, of over there. All right, composition wise, we can bring it down. Oh, we're not even in, we're, we're cropped. So I'm not a big fan of that crop at all. I know people say, well, but it's for Instagram. No, I don't care. Uh, two, three, that's what you're shooting. Like that's a little better in terms of composition. Um, the light is obviously super harsh where it's at right now. Um, I would I would probably break out the 50 a little bit and, and not shoot everything so tight. So far, everything we've seen is like a tight headshot. And I made the same mistakes when I first started. It was like everything was super tight and that just didn't, it just didn't work after a while. Cause you're like, okay, it's a tight headshot of a baseball player. Cool, they have a helmet on. Okay, we have a tight shot of a surfer. Oh, okay. We could see they're holding a surfboard and they're in a wetsuit, but all right, like let's see some of the ocean, right? Let's step back, let's go wider and let's see the scene. So you have played, the beach is huge. So I know you have space to move. So throw that 50 on, back up a little bit, get down on a lower angle, put your knee in the sand and get a nice horizontal shot of them waiting there to go in. And then, then when they start to walk into the water, then you could start to get that shot from behind. Then you could switch off to your 100 to 400 for now, because we're going to talk about gear in just a minute. Um, I like the exposure here. I like the horizon is perfectly straight. That stuff's good. In terms of in terms of composition, the same thing applies as before. Again, right in the middle. If we change it up a little bit, so if you just want to leave it in the middle, we'll just call this in the middle of the frame. But 
Do you see how we put the horizon a little lower? We put the boat a little lower in the frame. The horizon's here. It's still not exactly in the middle, but it gives you a little bit more breathing room, right? It's not just taking a picture just because it's in the middle. Um, it's been a while since I used the EOS R, so I'm not sure if it's just those focusing points in the middle or not, but um, you just play with your, your angles there. Tilt up, give yourself less water here. You could even go vertical and leave you know some negative space in there. You could go wider if you want, but this is much better in terms of an exposure. It's perfectly fine. It totally works. So we're going into overtime here because I'm taking a little longer. Uh, one, so I could see you're standing. This is where you get down on the level of the subject, the dog. The dog, get down on that level so that you can photograph the dog. Don't don't chop off their feet. You back up. Let me look at your settings. 1-800 at 5-6, fine. 1250 ISO, fine. Back up. You could zoom in on the dog. Let the dog, let the dog run, then let the dog run back towards you. So you could, you could do something like that, but you're just too close to the dog. Also, you could get out your 50, because if you have the 50 right now, you could use the 50, you could shoot it at 2.8 if you want, you could shoot it at 1.8 if you want, because that's what you have. But let's see some of that ocean in the background. Get down, get on an angle slightly so you can see the shoreline and it goes back and maybe you see some palm trees or you see some out of focus, uh, the, 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 the town in the background. Those are the types of things we're looking for. So this is much better in terms of, of where the horizon is. I like the feel of that. We're 132 hundredth of a second at 5.6 at 6.40 ISO. That's fine. Uh, you're getting the sun just as it's dipping. I like that. And it works, right? Is it setting the world on fire? No, it's not setting the world on fire, but I like that you're trying this and you're getting some okay results with this. I like that the wispy, the, the clouds look wispy. Uh, we're focused out here on the water somewhere, which is fine. If there were birds flying and you had silhouettes of birds, Okay, cool. I know you don't have control of that when the sun is going down, but if there were surfers out here or boats, like there's a boat or something out there in the distance, it, oh, there's a bird. So there's a bird. But if we had, if we found something where there was like a boat in the, in, in the left-hand side or a boat in the right-hand side, and we were zoomed in a little more to get the sun down with that, and a silhouette there that's going to build interest but it's still good that you're shooting something like this surfing pictures so it's the crop right the crop's going to kill you every time also you're up higher where are you I, that's what i'm trying to figure out how are you up so high in this one um so if we're going to crop let's keep the let's keep the original aspect ratio right i would still then you know you want to get the surfer you want to get the surfboard Right, that that that's fine, but I want to get down on a slightly. I want to lower angle so you can shoot up, so it makes the waves look larger. It's the same thing. I mean, it's like kind of like when a, you shoot a dick pic, you shoot it from the lower angle, and it makes things look larger. I don't know this for from fact. It's just I'm a photographer, and I have to help people get better pictures. But it, it, it's just like lower angle. I know it's different at a distance but you're gonna make the wave look larger because it looks like a pretty big wave. And so this is good action. And I know you're running into issues with the camera. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. All right, the bird's flying, much better. This is what we'd look for. If we got sun down, we'd be like, oh, okay, the sun's going down. Let's make it all this color. We're, we're not actually doing this. Like I wouldn't actually do this, but I'm just showing you if it was a silhouette and we just kind of got the sun going down, like that's what you what what you could end up getting if, if we were to do that. Um, but this is fine, right? It's fine, one, one 800th of a second at F8. This is that lens. That lens is just going to kill you. That's much better. See, you just see, wow, those three waves coming in. We got the boat out here. We've got the dinghy. What the hell they call those things? A buoy, right? This just feels better. Processing wise, we're going to have to go to town here. We've got all these different presets we could throw on there. If we were, oh, that one was good. What was that? Sandlot, of course. It's Sandlot could look pretty good. Wow, Silver Tide. It's a little dark, but ooh, this is all that's fro pack one. I know I'm going into extra, extra overtime here for you, but I just think that this is worth it to give you the extra overtime. Um, so let's just try to process this different. Now we don't want to add more because we can go with the silhouette here. Let's do this. We're going to lose the surfer just a little bit, but that's okay, right? This is about the whole entire scene. So that's taking out the warmth. That's adding the warmth back in using the yellow. Let's get some of the tint. 
It all it all depends on what the color actually was, right? So that's I don't know because I wasn't there, but I'm trying to go by the blue green of the water. I mean, to me, that's kind of probably where it was. But so this is much better. I love this composition. It just feels so much better. And I love that the surfer isn't right in the middle of the frame. So that definitely helps. Uh, this is the crop right off the bat um, that isn't going to work. But your colors and your tones are a hell of a lot better in this one. That all looks great, right? But let's make sure that we're keeping that original aspect ratio. I'll bring it down like this. That we could make work much better. Uh, some other things you could work on. You have a more zoom range here. Zoom in on the guy's glasses, right? Zoom in on the glasses and get that reflection in the glass of what's going on out there. So that's something that you could do that could be pretty good as well. Um, it's it's fine. It's kind of like it's, it's a snapshot. It works, right? It, it, it gets the job done. It's all right. But this is like we want more surfing. That's the same as the other surfer before. That's fine. And that's all right. And that's all right. So it's it's the camera and the lens combination that's killing you. Um, and I know that's not maybe the best thing to say, but it's kind of the truth here because the R just was not quick and didn't track as well. And it's the lens. So surfing picture. So again, let's let's keep this aspect ratio. Right. They're right in the middle, but also use leading lines sometimes. Maybe pull back instead of being at 400, be at 100 as he's going through the barrel. And he's not going to go through the barrel from here, but you've got him on the left-hand side going through the right, uh, go, and you can see the, the ripple of the wave coming down. Or you get him all the way to the right, and you can see the wave ending on the left-hand side. So think about different angles and not just throwing them right in the middle of the frame every single time. Uh, if you can get out on the water, I know that's not always easy. Maybe you could do that. But I think, so this is a start, right? You're out there. You talked about you want to get your kid. So I told you about how to do that photo story better. Let me let me stop my screen share and, and jump in here and talk to you. Um, because we got to talk about we got to talk about some gear. Tell the photo story that we talked about. Your kid's getting ready. It's early morning. You're getting ready to go out. You get photos of him getting up. You got the room. Get the wide angle of the room because he probably has surf posters. He probably has some other stuff in there that you're going to remember. See, I love wide shots uh, environment. I call them environmental portraits. So the kid could be sleeping and you open the window and there's some light in there, and, you know, whatever. You're going to get a shot of the room, but there's trinkets and stuffed animals and pictures and other things in the room that if you get a wider shot, say a 15 to 35, 2.8, maybe we're going to invest in something like that for the business. Uh, that could give you a nice wide shot of the bedroom to give you that establishing shot for the story. You've got breakfast. You could always get shots of breakfast of, of the kid getting ready. Then you're, you you get there, you, you get the surfboards ready. You're walking out from the car, all those different things that I talked about earlier. So gear wise, is the R the best choice? No, the answer is no. Is the 100 to 400 the best choice? I haven't put the review out yet, but the answer is going to be no. It's a super inexpensive lens. It's going to be fine for someone who wants to carry around cheap 100 to 400. I don't even know how cheap it is. I, I have to look up how much it is. Uh, I haven't checked that out yet, but it's not. As you saw with some of my lacrosse pictures, it hit it, most some and then others. It just was a little softer because I only showed you like five or six of the good ones and there's 206 of the not good ones. Um, and it's the lens that's going to hold you back there. I think an R6 or an R5, maybe an R5 might be a better choice. And the reason is if you're going to crop, I choose not to crop. But if you're going to crop a little bit, then the 45 megapixels is going to come in handy. What lens would be better? The 100 to 500 is a hell of a lens. It's also a hell of a lot more expensive. You also have an 800 F11. Oof, that's a tough one too. That's in a, less expensive, but it's still not the great. It's an F11. That's going to be tougher, but you do have bright light. That may just be good for the surfing. I, I think the R5, R6 are great choices. On the flip side, if we're shopping just lenses, because, well, on, on Canon, you could adapt um you know some sigma lenses and they should work like a 150 to 600 to give you some extra range that's if you want to stay canon if you wanted to go on the sony front you have an a7 IV and you have a 200 to 600 which is a very good lens the 200 600 is really good and it and it gives you a lot of extra reach so i went extra extra over time here um just just because um but i think you're off to a good start I think the gear is limiting you in this particular situation. I don't say that all the time because it's not always limiting people, but just keep that in mind when you're thinking about gear. So send me an email, 
back with your thoughts. I'll help you figure out what gear to get, but that's what I got there. Keep it up. Um, and I think you're just going to continue to get better with each step. So there you have it. So that was a pretty cool rapid fire critique. And I did check with the photographer to see if they were updated to the latest firmware for the EOS R because there were a lot of autofocus tweaks that Canon did to that camera. And they said they were updated to the latest firmware. They said that some of the reasons they did the crop was for Instagram, which I kindly kind of figured out. I'm not a big fan of leaving it that way. It just doesn't look as good. They also told me that they couldn't get as low because where they're shooting from, there's cliffs that they have to shoot from because they can't get onto the rocks or wherever they needed to go. So that's another thing. Uh, and he was more interested in updating to Canon. So he wanted to know about the R5, the R6, and the 100 to 500. They were super appreciative and said, I'm gonna need to watch this video like 10 times because there was a lot of information in it. But that's what one of these rapid fire critiques looks like. They're a 15 minute rapid fire critique where I tell you it like it is. It's not all rainbows and butterflies and this is awesome and this is great. And it's not all ripping you apart. The job is not to rip you apart, it's to build you up based off of what I'm seeing. So again, if you'd like to sign up for a mentorship, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorship and pick between the 15 minute rapid fire critique or the one-on-one -on -one live Zoom mentorship. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.